precaution we take when we see these we come uprooting them dispose them because we no longer need them here again to succeed in farming or to succeed in capsicum farming is not absence of troubles uh, any farmer you've seen succeeding any farmer you've, you've been admiring has gone through so many troubles has won all the troubles and has succeeded i'm not exempted from those problems uh, but it's good that uh, I'm seeing some of these problems in my farm so that I can share with you and be able to guide you so that you can be a better farmer. If you better avoid them, the better. If you can avoid them, the better and be avoidable. And I wanted us to discuss about two diseases today. And they are the worst diseases when it comes to tomatoes or when it comes to capsicum. When it comes to that family, they are the worst diseases. These diseases are bacterial wilting and fusillium wilt. Bacterial wilt, fusillium wilt. For bacterial wilt, to start with bacterial and fusillium wilt, you can only avoid them if you first do your soil analysis. We call for soil analysis. There is a pathology part of it. Pathology is uh, the, the disease part. In this section, that where we usually test the bacterium and the fusillium wilt. If it's pleasant, you are, you, you, you'll be advised. There are, there are uh, three types of advices where it's less, uh, it's mild, and it's very dangerous. Through that analysis, you are going to be advised whether it, uh, it can be treated using some product, it can be treated using uh, the crop rotation, or you need to avoid planting that area, capsicum in that area, for the next many seasons or for the next many years. That is the reason why we usually go for the soil analysis for us to be able to detect these pathological diseases, which are very dangerous. So you are lucky, I'm not lucky, you are lucky that at, at least I've identified one disease uh, that usually confuses so many farmers, and it's this disease. If you look closely at this plant, what do you see? Just look closely. This plant here is not withered, but these other branches here are withered. If you look at this, this crop here looks withered. If you look at this other one here, looks withered. If you look at this, it looks very healthy. Hope you can see that. This looks very healthy. Half of this is withered. The other is not withered. This is withered. This one is withered. This one is withered. When you see this, if it withers to this level or to this level, let me approve this one. If it withers to this level, you are pretty sure that this is an indication of either bacterial wilting or fusillium wilt either of the two either bacterial wilt or fusillium wilt if you you see it at this stage but now you can only be able to differentiate the the, the wilting that is bothering you by analyzing the soil on the stem here if you take this to the lab you're going to be able to tell the type of wilting that is attacking you. But when you see this, one side is withered and the other one is not withered. Now, this is an indication and a ticket that this is uh, not bacterial wilt. This is fusillium wilt. If for bacterial wilt, it withers this way and dies very quick. And in most cases, it dies at a very tender stage. It doesn't wait until it's this big. It withers and then it dies. In my conclusion, this is fusillium wilt. If you see this in your farm, uh, in most cases, it's withered during the day. At night, it's not withered. No, that is fusillium wilt. But sometimes, you may not be able to tell without doing the analysis. Uh, and at this point, we cannot go to do the analysis just to tell of the disease that has already started attacking us. The only thing, the precaution that we take from this stage is uprooting any plant that shows us this symptom because the plant that you see here 
For, don't do this in, in your farm because if you splend the soil, you are splending the disease. But for the sake of learning, you are going to do it. Uh, you can see, uh, this, also this can be caused by a lack of water. By If you hold the soil this way, it is, it is an assurance that this plant has enough water on its root. So this is not lack of water. Please don't do this uh, in your farm uh, because you will end up uh, spreading the diseases and uh, spreading it to the to the to the to the less of the plant. But for the sake of learning, we are doing this. You can see even my dog has, has visited to learn and see what is killing the the plant because she is she is in charge of the security here. So she wants to know who has been interfering with with the plants. That the disease. Hope. You are learning. Hope uh, you've learned something from us today's class, and I will continue sharing with you, uh, showing with you. Uh, if this is your first time that you are viewing this video about this disease, do your soil analysis. There are less no uh, treatment for these two diseases. Let nobody lie to you. The only treatment for these diseases is treating before planting. If the plant is attacked, there is no product that can treat this. You'll be wasting your cash, you'll be wasting your money by trying to treat this. In fact, it will spread at a very high speed. The only uh, precaution we take when we see this, we come uprooting them and disposing them. Like these ones, we are going to uproot and dispose them because we no longer need them here again. So that how we deal with them, we throw them away in the bush. And if this is your first time that you're watching me, don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel. Also, I invite you to be a member of this YouTube channel. If you like what I do, if you learn, being a member of this YouTube channel, you support my work. We continue learning together. Bye.